Hey YouTubers, it's Amazon Queen. Um, my friend Kara did a video about uh, surgical fears and so I thought I would make one um, for my own fears and to kind of reassure uh, my friend that it's that it's going to be okay. Um, I've had surgeries, many surgeries actually, um, in the past. Uh, I've, my first surgery was in 1998. Um, I had a tumor taken out of my right calf muscle um, along with a good chunk of my soleus muscle. And that is probably where my, uh, my surgical fears and anxiety started. Um, I grew up in the military. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned that before, but um, so I was always seen at military hospitals. I won't mention the name of the hospital. That almost butchered me. Um, but they, they botched things. Thankfully, they caught the mistake before I got into the OR. But I was all hooked up, ready to go, and the nurse comes over and starts going over my paperwork. Um, she's give, giving me a little bit, I forget what drugs she gave me to kind of calm me down because I was pretty nervous. It's a pretty scary thing to go through at the age of 19. And she's like, so we're doing surgery on the left leg. And I flipped out. I completely wigged out because the surgery wasn't on my left leg. It was supposed to be on my right leg. Then the surgeon comes over. Well, I thought it was the left leg. Really? I tried ripping my IVs out. I was beyond flipping out. Finally, they get all the paperwork settled. They made sure that they wrote um, on my left leg, even though I'd already done so with a permanent marker, not this one. And they wheeled me in. I had my surgery, came out, and I was fine. Um, but yeah, things can go wrong. Um, I've had two C-sections since then. Um, my first one was an emergency C-section um, because my son was sunny side up and he was stuck. Uh, my first son has a huge noggin and he was stuck in my pelvis. He was not coming out. There was uh, no ifs, ands, or buts about that. He was not coming out, no way, no how, unless it was via C-section. Um, even though it was an emergency C-section, I came through it just fine. Um, and I flipped out when they got me on the OR. Um, I warned my doctor and the anesthesiologist that I was going to have to be knocked out. Um, they wanted just to do a spinal block on me, even though they had tried to give me two epidurals and neither one of them worked because of my back injuries from my car wrecks. And that was pretty fun, uh, me arguing and screaming at the anesthesiologist that, yes, you have to knock me out or I won't be responsible for my actions. And they realized when they got me into the OR and got me scrubbed up, uh, my belly scrubbed up and ready to go that um, it was a good thing that they knocked me out because I was flipping out I was crying I was screaming I was trembling so bad that my whole body was shaking um, it was a very traumatic experience for me um, my poor doctor was pretty traumatized <laughs> um, from it because she'd never seen anybody flip out that badly um, my second c-section um, I was anemic going into it. It was a planned C-section, so no big deal. Um, however, I ended up losing probably half of my blood volume because I was anemic and for uh, some reason my uterus wasn't shrinking as fast as it should have been um, to stop the bleeding internally from where the placenta was. Sorry guys if there's guys watching this, but you know, that's just part of life. And I ended up needing four units of blood. I ended up with two transfusions. Um, so I have definitely run the gamut with surgeries. Um, I've had endoscopies, colonoscopies. Um, I, I've been poked and prodded and everything else uh, by medical people. Um, just recently I had another MRI and started uh, steroid shots directly to my spine. Um, and I wigged out with that, but they gave me some happy juice and I didn't wig out quite as badly. Um, but with my second C-section, I warned them that I had severe surgical anxiety um, and they were going over everything in the OR. Um, Kara, I don't know if you've ever had surgery before, but they go over everything. Everyone in the room tells you their name, who they are, what they're doing, and why they're in there. And they, every single person asks you, and you will hear it over and over and over and over again. What are you, what's your name? What's your date of birth? What are you in here for? And you will have to repeat it every single time to every single person. 
And they do this to make sure that like back in 98, when I had my surgery, that they don't screw up. So there are a lot of safety measures that are in place. However, it doesn't help those of us that, like me, <clears throat> that wig out no matter how much um, there are safety measures in place. Um, I literally was shaking so badly that the poor nurse in my second C-section was like, let's just knock her out now um, because she's really flipping out. I mean, I was literally convulsing on the table um, as they were going over everything and everyone felt so bad for me because of my anxiety. Um, everyone had uh, been told of my previous uh, surgical anxiety problems as well as the fact that when I come out of anesthesia, um, I swing. <laughs> I have actually broken noses. I actually broke my friend's um, when I had my leg surgery in 98, I actually broke my friend's mom's nose. I whacked her so hard in the face, I broke her nose at 19 years old. I felt so horrible and so bad. Um, she didn't hold it against me. She said it, it, it actually happens a lot. So I have to warn all the medical staff whenever they put me under any kind of sedation, whether it be general anesthesia or just a little bit of sedation that um, you better not be within arm's reach or I will not be held responsible. Um, I've actually asked my doctors in the past to actually put me in restraints, but most hospitals will not do that unless you're a psychiatric patient. Oh well. So as we get closer, um, I'm pretty sure that on my videos you will definitely see me start to freak out. Um, I will start probably crying, I will probably start whimpering, and mind you, I have a medical background. Um, I was a nursing student up until my car wrecks. Um, I was a CNA, I was a volunteer firefighter, you know, blood, gore, you know, bring it on, as long as it's not me. So fears are normal, and especially if you've never had major surgery, the fears can be really, really bad. Um, if you're having that much anxiety, um, you know, and you're like, why in the world am I doing this? You know, go back, and what I'm doing, like yesterday, I had, it wasn't anxiety about um, the surgery, it was, I am going through the South Beach diet right now. I have cut out carbs, period. No carbs, no pasta, bread, sugar, nothing. However, my son's candy is sitting up, and we only got him one hollow bunny, and then he got some jelly beans from a friend of ours and a solid chocolate Mickey Mouse from another friend. That's all he got as far as junk. And it's sitting there. Matter of fact, I can see it right now from where I'm sitting. And boy, I can't tell you how badly I wanted to annihilate that chocolate bunny yesterday. I mean, it was so bad that I sat here and was just like, I almost cried because I wanted junk so bad. Um, but what I did and what I'll probably start doing as my anxiety is for the surgery gets closer and closer is I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at my vlogs. I'm going to look at my introduction. I'm going to look at why I wanted to do this in the first place because that's going to help me remember why I'm doing this. I am doing this for a better life, a healthier life for me. And yeah, there's going to be some anxiety for it and there's going to be pain and there's going to be some scars, but the overall outcome is going to be so worth it in the end. Complications. Um, if you actually look at a lot of the statistics, um, whether you're looking at your doctor's office, you've talked to your doctor, you've talked to some of your doctor's patients, um, you've gone online, you know, what have you. Nowadays, with the way that they do things, it's pretty rare to have complications. Most of the complications that I've seen from people is that they get dehydrated, either because they just aren't drinking enough water like they're supposed to, or they're unable to drink it because it makes them, they're so nauseous after surgery that they have to go back in for some IVs. Those are the major um, ones that I've heard is that people just get dehydrated. So have your bottle standing by and sip, 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 sip. Um, even if you can't really drink anything, put some ice chips in your mouth, um, some crushed ice. I get my bags of ice from Sonic and it's the crushed little pellet kind that I love and I can just sit here and crunch on it. One, it gives me that, that crunchy texture that I want. Plus I'm kind of anemic so I kind of crave chewing ice anyway but it also helps keep your mouth moist and you actually swallow the water. Um, you kind of trick your, your mind into that. 
But the most that I've seen, and, and trust me, I'm one of those people that I research everything to a fault. Um, I am completely OCD about it. I can't help myself. <laughs> and most of the people just get dehydrated. Um, they get dehydrated or um, as you're after surgery, a lot of people can't tolerate a lot of the foods that they used to eat. Um, some people can't eat red meat at all. Some people can't eat poultry at all. Um, some people can't handle seafood, but they used to eat it all the time before. Um, your palate, from what I understand, changes after surgery. So everyone should have anxiety a little bit. I'm going to have more because of my traumatic issue, but that was just, you know, my life experience. Um, if you're really having a problem, go talk to your surgeon. Go talk to your counselor if you have one set up and, and discuss the fears because if, if you're finding that you're really starting to second guess having surgery, maybe you need to go talk to somebody about it. Um, I know probably as we get closer to my surgery, I will probably be calling uh, my doctor's nurse or PA um, probably at least two weeks out almost every day or every other day, bawling my eyes out going, are you sure? Are you sure there's nothing that's going to go terribly wrong? There's always risk with surgery. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're going in for, you know, major surgery like the sleeve or if you're just going in to get your wisdom teeth pulled out. Um, and I can give you stories about having my wisdom teeth pulled out because I got really, really sick and it was awful. But if you do, as you're, per as you're told by your surgeon, you get up and you walk around, you take your medicines like you're supposed to, you, you do as you're supposed to, you don't go out and go to an all you can eat buffet after you're able to start eating regular food again and, you know, eat yourself sick, you shouldn't have many complications at all. Um, a big part of your recovery is your mindset prior to surgery. So I highly recommend get your brain, get your mind into the right place. Um, it will definitely help you recover that much faster. Um, don't go in there thinking, oh my God, I'm going to be that one that everything goes wrong. Go in there with a the mindset that I'm going in, this is my life changing tool that I'm getting. I'm going to start, you know, a whole new healthy life for myself and everything is going to be just fine. Even if you have to think to yourself that you're lying to yourself about it and just keep all those negative thoughts out of your brain because you will recover so much faster and so much better going into the surgery the day of when they wheel you into the OR that everything will be just fine. Again, the biggest thing I've heard is dehydration. So get used to drinking lots and lots and lots and lots. Um, matter of fact, I'm actually going to Costco here in a little bit, and I'm going to be getting me a couple cases of um, uh, the Smart Water. Um, because I've cut out all of my carbs, that includes my bananas, um, which are full of potassium, and I don't want to start cramping up. I'm actually starting to cramp in my muscles a little bit um, because my body's needing some potassium. So I'm going to go get some Smart Water, and I'll start drinking at least one of those a day from here on out. Um, but if, if any of you that are secretly watching me or that have subscribed to me and you really are starting to have some anxiety, feel free to message me, feel free to email me, um, feel free to leave me a, a, a response saying um, you're a moron, whatever. It doesn't really bother me. If people are negative, that's fine. Um, but, you know, I have no problem helping people with their anxiety because I'm sure I'll probably be emailing or messaging a few of you going, oh my God, what am I doing? So everyone stay healthy, stay safe, drink your fluids. And I'm on my way to Costco.